Demodex mites are one of the most challenging problems that optometrists and ophthalmologists face in the routine care of their patients. These little mites are microscopic parasites. They use a seven-clawed organ, a pelvis, to grab hold of cells. Then they feast on the cells at the follicle, sucking out their innards with a retractable needle in the middle of a round mouth. How disgusting was that? How much do you want to watch this video? I bet everybody clicks off right now. So what can you do about this parasite that's feasting on your eyelash follicles? Well, we're gonna get into it now. Welcome back to Eye School with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes and not have demodex mites feasting on your follicles. So make sure to click that button if you want to stay here after all that craziness. So what are demodex mites? I've done this before, I have a whole video about it, but demodex is a genus of tiny mites that live on, in, or near hair follicles of mammals. So we're not the only ones that they victimize. There's around 65 species of demodex that are known, and two species live on humans, demodex folliculorum and demodex brevis, which are both frequently referred to as eyelash mites, alternatively like face mites or skin mites. Almost everybody has these mites, but they don't usually cause any problems. So I always tell my dry eye patients, we all have demodex mites. The goal is not necessarily to get rid of them entirely, but it seems like in dry eye patients, we end up having sort of an inflammatory situation, a reduction of the skin barrier, and these demodex mites just move in and have an absolute party. And that's true. Demodex can multiply too quickly in people who are immunocompromised or have other skin conditions. And that's when they set up camp and throw a party on your eyelashes and it is not a good situation because it causes an itchy, irritating condition called demicidosis, demodicosis, demodicosis. These tiny creatures are arachnids, which are their cousins of spiders and ticks. This is not helping you probably wish you hadn't eaten lunch right before this. Almost everybody has demodex mites living on their skin and in their pores, particularly on your cheeks, your eyelashes, your forehead, outside of ear canals, on the sides of your nose. And But honestly, usually these mites don't cause any harm, but if there's too many, it causes this inflammation, this demodex folliculitis or demodicosis that causes irritation and problems. So what do they look like? I'll try to put one on screen. They're very, very tiny, about 0.15 millimeters up to about 0.4 millimeters. So I cannot see them as your provider living on your lashes. It would take several of them to even cover a pinhead. Under a microscope, the mite looks slightly transparent and it's covered with little scales. It's got this long skinny body in two segments. In the first segment, all their legs are at the top, their mouth, all the legs. And then the rest of it is this long skinny little body. When you're sleeping, the mites come out of your skin's pores, mate, and then go back into your skin to lay eggs, which is honestly incredibly rude. So how do you tell if you have demodex mites? Well, you may experience the following as the patient. You might notice that your eyes burn, there's itchiness, there's irritation and inflammation of your lid margin. You can even have little pustules that look like whiteheads on the skin, redness, feel like your skin feels like sandpaper, like it's kind of rough. You can have eczema type scales on your skin your skin just might feel sensitive, but there can also be like a white sheen to your skin and eyelashes. As the provider, if I see lashes that have, number one, my bony gland dysfunction, but also these little collarettes or cuffs around the base of the eyelash, that's fairly pathognomonic that we have demodex on board. So if the condition does affect your eyes, you can notice blurred vision, decreased vision, fluctuating vision, irritation of both your eyes and your eyelids, itchiness, loss of lashes. A lot of my dry eye patients will lose their lashes. Well, part of that reason because we may have a demodex overpopulation situation. So could you theoretically have demodex mites on your whole body? Well, the symptoms of demodex brevis are similar to those of demodex folliculorum. So the key difference is location. While folliculorum tends to stay on the face, brevis can distribute all over the body. The chest and neck are common areas where demodex brevis will do their infestation. So you might notice more symptoms there if you happen to have it. 
Now, what are the multiple eyelid signs that are suggestive? So getting more into the signs that we see. So we often will see just blepharitis, dead skin cells on the eyelids, inflammation of the eyelids, any sort of debris on the eyelashes, including that cylindrical dandruff or that little cuff I was telling you about. We can have scaly debris, waxy debris, eyelid redness, and eyelid new blood vessels growing. Telangiectasia is the $50 word there. So how do you know if you have a demodex infestation? Well, a definitive diagnosis of Demodex involves viewing an epilated eyelash. That means what I need to do is pull your lash out and put it on a microscope. I have had a microscope in my Amazon cart no less than a thousand times. In fact, I think it's saved. I should absolutely get one. I just never pull the trigger because I don't necessarily feel like I need it for the definitive diagnosis. I pretty much know if we have a Demodex situation or not, but boy, I just wanna look at those little guys and, and let them know what's coming, that we're gonna get rid of them. It's important to understand though that the mite has to be firmly attached to the eyelash or else you're not gonna see it. It's gonna scurry into the follicle and just get away from you. In all probability, some of the mites will in fact remain in the follicle even after you epilate the lash. So you can lose like a lot of them and not even be able to see it. If you move that lash side to side, you can see the little tails protruding from the eyelash base with the slit lamp. So you can move the little eyelash without even pulling it out and putting it under a microscope. And because of how they burrow themselves into the follicle, you can see their little tails flipping when you're on high mag on the slit lamp. Comment down below if you want me to do that. If enough people comment, I will find somebody with a Demodex infestation. I'll take a video for you. So Demodex folliculorum buries itself face down near the root of the eyelashes as it just feasts at the cells that line the follicle and then the waste material the mites produce builds up as debris on the eyelids and it causes inflammation. In addition, the Demodex folliculorum typically will carry staph and bacillus bacteria and the combination of the mites and the bacteria causes blepharitis, a condition suffered by more than 20 million Americans. Super, super common. And your eyes can become red, irritated, painful, and you can have crusty debris that builds up on your eyelids and your eyes when you have blepharitis. So then the other species, Demodex brevis, meanwhile, is burrowing into the meibomian gland to feed, often plugging up the crucial gland. So those can actually go right into the gland. And this gland we know is so important. Please, if you're new to this channel, dive down the meibomian glands playlist because it is so critical. 86% of dry eye has a meibomian gland issue with it. This gland produces an oily substance that's necessary to keep the tears from evaporating. As a result of these little brevis guys getting in there, you can have meibomian gland disease, MGD, and that can cause dry eye. These parasites are incredibly common. One study found them in, okay, if you're 20 years old, 25% of you have Demodex brevis. If you're 50 years old, 30%. There's a 100% of patients older than 90 years old have Demodex on their lashes, on their lids. Okay, finally, we're gonna get into ivermectin cream. So does ivermectin cream kill Demodex mites? Well, ivermectin is a broad spectrum antiparasitic drug. It kills the Demodex mites that reside in the pilosebaceous units of patients with papulopustular rosacea. It also has anti-inflammatory effects. It decreases cellular and humoral immune responses. So in short, a lot of promise for treating Demodex over infestations as we see in MGD and dry eye. So in terms of how often you use it and how it's compounded. There's some different thoughts on this. Dr. Rolando Toyos, I'll link his channel below. He's somebody I look up to a lot in dry eye care, have talked to multiple times. He came up with some different ivermectin creams recently and he offers those to other providers as well. So if you're seeing a dry eye specialist, they absolutely can have access to Dr. Toyos's um, pharmacy, his compounding pharmacy, and his formulations of ivermectin. You just have to contact the Toyos Clinic in order to be able to offer those to your patients. But in general, how long can you use it? What's the deal? How often do you use it? Dr. Toyos's formulations are formulated for the eyelids. There are other formulations that are formulated for the face, and so it's important, number one, to know which one you're dealing with. Typical ivermectin creams that most doctors can get without formulating for the eyes, you can apply like once daily for up to four months. If there's no treatment, 
improvement after about three months, you can discontinue your treatment. It's really gonna be up to your doctor how much and how often. It sort of depends on your specific situation. You may have a doctor that tries ivermectin cream on your face in more of a facial preparation, and they could do forehead, chin, nose, and each cheek. Dr. Toyos has a couple of different formulations of ivermectin cream. He has a 0.1% ivermectin with melatonin 1%. It's a topical eyelid ointment, and it's to be applied once daily, morning and night. He has an additional cream that's an ivermectin 1% with melatonin 1%, also applied directly to the lids, I believe. Although this one doesn't say topical eyelid ointment, maybe just facial, but that's once morning and night. So those are the specific concentrations of Dr. Toyos, who's a widely recognized dry eye specialist um, in Nashville, runs the Toyos Clinic. I'll definitely link his channel as well. And that's how he's got patients using ivermectin. And we're seeing this gain traction in other dry eye clinics. We have so many tools to treat Demodex infestations that it sort of just depends on the patient. A lot of times I'm able to get it under control with other means and so I'm not always jumping to ivermectin, but we can use it when necessary. And so if you have major issues with Demodex overpopulation, you now have an option with Dr. Toyos' compounded ivermectin creams, which I think is a great idea. So, okay, this was a fun one. I hope you enjoyed this video about Demodex. On my last video about Demodex, I kind of caught a lot of flack for sort of making fun of it. I was just trying to have fun, to be totally honest with you but it's hard for me to not get a little bit silly when I'm having to talk about these little parasites feasting. I don't know, I'm sorry. It's a serious issue. Demodex mites really cause a lot of grief. They cause a lot of pain. We have new medications on the horizon that specifically treat the meibomian glands, that specifically treat Demodex, and we'll have FDA approval for that. In the meantime, this ivermectin cream is such a good option. If you're suffering, ivermectin is definitely something to try, but you also have your other options like tea tree if you can tolerate it, as well as hypochlorous to help the situation, help the general skin barrier. And then we also have some Demodex Demodex um, activity, anti-demodex activity with our okra-based polysaccharides. Dr. Peter Pham and the Zocular line of products are phenomenal. So check out my other videos, leave comments below, but treating the eyes and the eyelids will bring quick relief to patients, especially if you've got a massive overpopulation of Demodex and you have all this inflammation on the lid margin. So I hope that this video was helpful. Again, leave the questions down below, but that's gonna be it for today's iSchool. Class is dismissed. Oh,